Thank you guys for coming out tonight. We got a very special episode of Strategy Session tonight. I am joined by the one and only Ken West. So the mystery is finally out. This is Ken West, and we're gonna be exploring some of his games tonight. So Ken, thanks for for coming out. Um, we're gonna have a look at, at some of your games, and uh, we'll see what's what's been going on. So Ken is member number eighty three. He's been coming to the club forever. Plays in all sorts of tournaments uh, and things like that. And the games that I've selected tonight are from this month's Knights tournament. So every Wednesday, you play one round uh, and you accumulate points over the course of the month. And at the end, whoever has the most points is the winner. So, so far, there's been three weeks. We'll see how many games we get through tonight. And uh, let's see. Let's talk about this first round game. So we're going to throw it over the board, only if Ben Simon's ready. And uh, the first round opponent that you had was Luke Yi, the little kid, 1,700, uh, very, very talented kid. So he's been, you know, his rating just keeps going up, and he's probably even stronger than 1,700 now. So we will look at this game, and uh, we won't talk about the, the Grandmaster's rating. That's the big thing. Is, is Ken really a Grandmaster? That's what we're going to try to figure out tonight. It's, it's unclear. We'll see this, and we'll lay that, the answer to that question to rest, yeah, I think. Either uh, way, yeah, let's, let's take see a look. How play. <laughs> exactly. So, and I will say, I did beat Luke about a year ago, but he was like yeah. 1,100. Yeah, he's just shot up shot so fast. way up real fast. Definitely. Okay. So Ken has the black pieces here. We'll get right to it, because we got a lot to cover tonight. All right. So, so far... A normal opening, the Petrov, so you still play this? I still play it, may give it up, and Luke goes into the variation I hate against it. Okay. I hate that. You hate this? <laughs> he should take the pawn. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, everybody wants to take, but I guess it's a good move because he, he knew his opponent very well. <laughs> and so, okay, Ken would have been ready for this. Right. So, so good prep. Right. And maybe he did do prep because at the Knights, you get analysis from the Grandmaster, so you get to see every game that's been played. So it is quite possible he did see that. Okay, he's going to play this, and then I'm going to surprise him with knight to c3. So a very good choice. And I think here already Ken tried to play very aggressively. Yes, and I drop a pawn shortly. And he played d5, which drops a pawn. Right away. Okay, but yeah, it's only move three. I mean, it's, it's typical. Um, are you, do you not like the four knights? That's probably better. I don't know it, but I mm. obviously don't know the other either. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, I would just play the four knights here as black, which is... Fine. Uh, white maybe has a tiny smidge. Bring the bishop out to c5. And... Yeah, the bishop comes out. You castle, d6. Your other bishop comes out. It's it's pretty easy um, just to play, even if you don't know a lot of theory. But this very unconventional gambit, the, uh, the west <laughs> gambit. Uh, don't try this one at home. Uh, he took it. And, I, I mean, I don't... See anything better? I don't think e4 really accomplishes anything. I think, you know, like if here, instead of the game, I mean, I don't know what that actually accomplished. Uh, so, Ken just decided to, to take it. Overlooking the fact that the, the e5 pawn is yeah. just waiting to be eaten. Is this what you calculated? Like this capture that kind your of pawn thing, is yes. protected? Of course. Um, and sometimes, and you know, in these openings, so what happened in the game was he just took this pawn. He just took the pawn. And you know, sometimes there's like e-file things where you go here, and then you hope they do something silly, and then you like win because there's a pin. But I think here, I mean, he can just use his queen to block as well. Exactly. And, okay, that's just a pawn. Um, so after he took, let's see what Ken did. I don't even remember most of this game. So okay, he took. And I suppose white can capture either way. Um, I can capture with my d pawn and maybe trade the queens, but I think this also is perfectly reasonable, and I'm a pawn up. Exactly. So, uh, but I think too there was some moments in this game where perhaps we could come up with some better moves because it's tough. Sometimes you know you're down a pawn, but there's still a lot of game left. We got all the pieces, and you know there's all sorts of stuff going on here. So we'll see if uh, Ken actually ever has a, a chance to to get some redemption here. So okay, bishop d6. That makes sense. Yeah, if queen e7 doesn't work, then okay, I guess that's a valid move. And he just goes back. He just goes back. Yeah. With a pawn. He's just up a pawn. So, knight c6, sure. d4, love it. Castles, bishop e2. And I believe it's here, I mean, we don't see a great plan for you, but I guess... <laughs> 
I guess, yeah, you, you go try to checkmate him. Because here you played here, which I thought was a little strange. So I guess, too, uh, I didn't really want to put this bishop here just because at some point it might get traded. And I don't really want to trade. So I guess if it were me, I would have tried to find a different square for the bishop just because here it won't be traded. Perhaps I get some pressure on this guy. Uh, and you will soon say I even made way of matters worse by taking that knight with that bishop. Okay, you can take the knight. Worse. Castles. Is it here? I can't remember. It's okay, so you just took the knight. And, yeah, this is a big mistake, and I've seen this a lot in a lot of knights games. And then every week the grandmasters keep saying, you know, don't give up your bishops for the knights exactly. for no reason, and then everybody keeps doing it. I've noticed, too, at this tournament, the grandmasters tell you, like, stop doing this, and every week it's the same. Right. It's, it does, it's not just you, it's everybody. Everybody that plays... Um, don't put a knight on the rim, you yeah. put a knight on the rim. Yeah, right. it doesn't matter what you do, it's just, like, I think, all they can do is tell you every time, not, just stop it. Um, why did you make this decision? Did you have anything in mind? I all? thought I saw some, a, a ghost where I thought I could get some pawn back, but uh, it doesn't happen. Okay, is there, like, some trick here? I guess if you took it back. Like you thought you had some trick maybe here? Right, right, like picking up that H2 point somewhere, somewhere along the line. But, okay. But uh, no. No? Okay. <laughs> All right. So See. So you made a threat, though. Right. He's a little kid. Maybe he'll miss it. Maybe he'll miss it. Um, but okay, he is 1,700. And I think even here, too, white could improve. So I guess I'll give the audience two choices here. You can play H3 or G3. Those are your choices. Um, we'll get the audience involved a little bit. If you guys were faced with this this threat of checkmate, how would you guys parry the threat? Also, I'll give you this third option. That stops you. That'll, that'll show you. And, you know, it's the Knights game, so that's, that's very possible. I would have liked that. Would have liked that <laughs> would have been nice. Oh, yes, but how would you guys choose to defend against the mate here? Ben Simon says G3. Why G3, Ben Simon? Because the bishop can go back to g2. Right. And I guess, too, though, so in the game he played h3. And my way of thinking is when I notice that somebody doesn't have a bishop, so you don't have a light squared bishop, I want my dark squares to be really strong. Right. So I would play, if it'll let me, the move g3, which strengthens the dark squares around my king. I'm obviously not worried about weakening my light squares. Not only do I have a light squared bishop, but he actually can go back and cover all the squares if I need him to. And also, after h3, I mean, obviously, this should be fine, too. Sometimes it might be possible, like, if we just choose to go out the wrong way, sometimes you might be able to force more weaknesses. So even though that might not be possible for a long time, and you should probably be careful not to let that happen, <laughs> I think just overall, g3 makes a lot of sense. Strengthen the dark squares, sense. and your dark squared bishop looks in granite. All right. But okay, so here we go, h3. And now some deep prophylaxis. Right. Um, you really, yeah. Was this just because you thought white would go here? Well, the computer was screaming that white should do that. I saw later. Mm -hmm. But I was also wanting to, uh, what was my plan here? Oh, uh, I think I was wanting to bring my knight back over. Okay. It's some, you're coming somewhere. Somewhere around here, yeah. Okay. And did you have like a dream square? So normally I like to think about where he should go like i'll pick him up and i'll be like where should i go i feel like i should be somewhere towards your king right i don't know where i should be maybe maybe i should be here so i don't know maybe you, sh you could do this with your knight you'd have to you know knock it forth and stuff but right. maybe that is is ultimately the square where your knight wants well, to be oh and the other re oh that's right because i wanted to uh be able to move the knight and if the rook's not there it would just be bishop takes pawn okay so you're moving the knight so you're protecting the pawn right um, and I suppose, too, he could play rook b1 just to prevent to your up, maneuver. Exactly. Still can't if he it. should prevent your maneuver. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I, then I could probably go to uh, a5. Mm -hmm. and, but then the knight's on the rim, so, you know. Right, and then after this move, where are you going? Yeah. Yeah, it feels like you should be going towards the king side. Exactly. Go, go get him over there. Um, but I wanted to be able to move the knight, and mm -hmm. I can't without the rook being there. I lose another pawn. Yeah. Which would not be so good. Yeah, not so good. All right, so I like it. And so after this move, um, I guess, are you? is this where you're right. headed here? Exactly. Okay. Rookie one. Sure. All right, F5. 
So it's at least an aggressive move. I don't know. What else? Are you trying to control E4? Are you worried about something? Are you just gonna are you gonna go nuts here and go like that? I, I was throwing the kitchen sink. Yeah. You know, it's like I'm down a pawn, what can I do? Yeah, we I mean we don't wanna be too too desperate. I mean right. it's it's only a pawn so we don't have to get so aggressive, but I mean okay, maybe something like this playing for mate. You know, if we can play G five Put our knight here. Maybe you know you're gonna try to open them up. Double up the, the rooks. Get the rooks the on the F file somehow. All right. All right. So he made a, a s simple threat, I guess. He's gonna play C5. Right. <laughs> to get the knight out of the way. And C5. Okay. So that's good. I mean, he's got this extra pawn over here, so he's pushing where he has a majority. That makes sense. Very solid. Um, pretty good for a little kid. Yeah, that's not like a that's not a normal little kid move, you know. Just a little tiny strengthening. Yeah, that's not what you expect. Because then that eliminates the bishop going to f six and the rooks coming to d eight, yeah. doubling up and there with the queen behind it. Yep, yeah, you got, he's just you know, like no, just solid. Just go away. Yeah, he's just waiting, and I'll tell you where this guy goes a little bit later. Just just give me a minute. I'll tell you. I'll tell you later. Okay, so you wanted to relieve your rook, so I think that move makes sense. And now if he ever plays like d5, maybe you can take it and he'll have weaknesses. So, okay, I think that move makes sense. Um, that surprised okay. me. Okay, so that's interesting. Well, he's probably coming there, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I did think he would keep this guy here just for defense. Um, you know, I, I feel like this guy's pretty good over here. But I guess now he sees, all right, nothing's happening here. So, it's all right, we're going to re-maneuver. And as long as I don't get checkmated, because black is starting to put a lot of pieces over here. So I would, you know, get a little bit of hope. I don't think it's anything yet, but, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe you drift a little bit too far that way. Maybe <laughs> Ken West comes back. Uh, okay, another prophylactic move. Just getting out of the way of the check. And he offers a trade of queens. Where's my queen? Yeah, I... so, so probably I would move my queen or something, but... That's tough. I You'd have to go here. Yeah. And that's... Eh, I guess I, I'd probably do that. I think I did. not trade. I think I did trade just to get the F file open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd trade and then go here. I guess that's what I would do. Probably wouldn't trade. But I like what you did too. So you didn't trade. Okay, you just... Good. You got your, your rook over there. And you're lining up with this unprotected rook. So right. that could be something. And... Uh, I did already have a, a quick look at this position. And so I think here, Ken actually missed a really big chance. Uh, there's a really, really good move for black. Do you know the move? So see if you can find it before Ken West. You can pause your, your videos. Bishop takes pawn? Bishop takes pawn? No, that doesn't work. Okay, so you have this right, idea. He just takes this first, though, and it moves his, and I've got nothing. Right. And I, I take all your stuff. Right. Then I'm really losing. Yeah. So that's... But we're on the, the right track. There is something here to this, you know, possible tactical idea. And you do want to... When you see stuff like this, like we're lined up, this piece is unprotected, you want to see how can I make some sort of tactical possibility come from this. Bishop you should D6. always... Yeah. Bishop D6. So I think this just would have... You know, you're probably winning now. Wow. So, you know, because if here, I mean, I can take here. And if you take here, it is protected by my knight. Right. So something like this. Not too bad. Not, not bad at all. <laughs> um, let's see, what other possible moves? Um, you could, if you trade here, okay, I'm taking your rook with check. And so you're probably going to get... No, that's me. Yeah, it's mate. It's even better. <laughs> so that's even better. Uh, what else? What other moves could he even even try? I guess he could take this. This is one way to do it too. Maybe this is the best move. And then here, and so he lost an exchange. And that bishop's never going anywhere. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, no, but yeah, uh, that's right. but yeah. So you actually you missed a chance I here, did. Ken. You I missed a chance to beat little Luke Yi. That would be um, fun. Yeah, it could have been the, the big turnaround. Right. And it just comes from trying to find tactical ideas. You know, you want to start to recognize when there's the possibility for certain tactics. And when you, you're lined up with an unprotected piece, you want to stop and you want to try to come up with 
some move like this because anywhere we move the bishop, you know, we're attacking an unprotected piece. So. And then attacking the queen Boom. at the same time. So nice. yeah, the most most forceful move, attack the queen. Nice. Um, but sadly, it was not to be. <laughs> and But even, okay, so if you don't see that tactic, which is understandable, um, why did you decide to trade the queens? To get the F-file open. To get the F-file open? Which is... Okay, but do you have to... do you have a way to, like, exploit this? You're going to push? That was the idea. But it's protected. Yeah, I like when now. the F-file opens for me, but not for him. Right, <laughs> right, right. Um, right. So I just might... You know, that, that's also a pretty good pawn. It's a decent pawn there. It has a good utility. But you went here to trade more. Well, to also line up on that uh, okay, you're, G3 pawn, yeah. Okay, so we saw some, some good bishop maneuvers in this game. So you're going C7. I assume when you get there, he'll protect it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So you connected his rooks. And he trades, because he's ahead. He's ahead. Um, <laughs> ah, it's a very interesting move. So he found a little tactical move. Uh, let's let's just play one embarrassing line. That would not be good. <laughs> but uh, I did see that. <laughs> you did see it. Okay, and good. And you, and you chose not to trade, which I again think is probably right. And, uh, I mean, okay, and it's... We do have to be careful that we have a knight here, but, you know, sometimes this rook is going to come down here. And it does come kind of scary. And it just eats up a bunch of pawns. Mm -hmm. So there goes the king. King is going to protect the pawn. Okay, not a move like f4. So I don't really know what happens on f4, but that seems like. Do you think he would play here? I think he would. Right. Um, yeah. Okay, so instead, a little extra luft. Never well, hurts. I never wanted hurts. to get chief. G5 in. Okay, so we need to put the knight somewhere. The right. problem is, I don't know where that somewhere is. Right now, no. But, uh, but okay, maybe, yeah, maybe some little I think tidying that's what moves, happened, if I recall some, correctly. Yeah. Maybe some tidying. Except for, yeah, I don't know how you're going to do it. We're, we'll see. We'll see what you come up with. So you protect the guy. Um, aha, knight H8. A, a deep, powerful remaneuvering. Preparing G5. Um, <laughs> somehow you go here. Yeah, okay, you're going to play G5, which he prevented. Look at that. And he just took it more stuff. He did, now he's starting to eat pawns. Yeah. And, okay, from, from here, things kind of fell apart. <laughs> um, I don't think there was any, any moment where he no, gave I, you a chance I, I, to I thought back. at one point there could be a three-fold repetition in there, but yeah, no, yeah. he just runs the king over, yeah, comes just, down this side, pushes a pawn. Yeah, and then uh, I took that guy, too. Yeah, so he and just... Then, all right, clean, so. Goodbye. Good night. <laughs> Um, so I think we answered one question: Is Ken West really a GM? Yeah. So let's let's look at two moments here. So again, you know, not to that's cute. Not to beat it to death, but I love it. We do have this this possibility, so we want to look for these tactical ideas, and we'll go all the way back. So just don't give away a pawn and move through. Exactly. Here. Exactly. Yeah, and the thing is, the funny thing is, before I went over the computer analysis, mm -hmm. I thought. Oh, I'm hanging in pretty good. Yeah. But you run through the computer says, no, you're right, just down. Yeah. You're down. You're down. You're down. Yeah, I'm like plus one. I'm up yeah, yeah. You're, you're getting an hour and a half of futile. Points, yeah, so, so so do not try the, the West Gambit at home. Right. That's It's not to be recommended. But okay, he gets... Uh, the, the second round is a little bit better for you. This is Timothy Zhang. Um, we can't see the, the rating on here, but I think he's about 800, 800 or, or so. Like 600. And, all right, Ken gets the white pieces... And guess what I play? Guess what he plays? And so if you know Ken West, you know he plays the collie, like no matter what. <laughs> um, so that's what we're gonna see. But his opponent here played very unusual. So normally they play knight f6, and then Ken plays e3. That's that's every Ken West game. Right. We'll wake you up when the game's over. Right, and then you know white gets to be better, so it's not. And I know because we've played this before too. And right. as the higher rated player, I hate facing this, so I kind of like what... But now that I have some Ken West prep, because I've seen this game, <laughs> maybe next time I'll play Knight to C6. I'm going to go to the ready. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the point here is, okay, maybe I'm just going to play E5 and immediately, at some point, um, or maybe I'm going to get my bishop out, you know, on your knight, and maybe I can play E5 at some point. Um, 
and also about C6, you just can't play as a robot and go E3, Bishop, right. D3, because then you mm-hmm. can kick you back, and then you <laughs> kick him. And, mm-hmm. Right, because this is sort of an unusual move. I don't know how many times you've come across this I one. I had to stop and think for a minute. But, <laughs> yeah, when they do put their knight in front of their pawn, there are some, some differences. The knight is only useful here if I ever play E5. If I never play E5, then I'm in the way. Because if I put my pawn on E6, and then my, my pawns are, are going this way, I need to be able to play the move C5, and then the knight is in the way. That's good. So unless I play E5, this isn't where I want my knight. So... Um, so you just played e3 because Ken West just does that no matter what. <laughs> but uh, okay, also possible was just bishop to f4, which is a little bit more active. And, and it's the London on e5. Every time the grandmasters do the analysis for this, they go, when you play e3, they go, no, get the bishop out. Yeah. First. They're like, no, <laughs> mm-hmm. I play the Kali. Right, so yeah. against a normal setup, I mean, okay, e3 is a fine move. Right, right. Um, Tuesday used to be a beginner breakdown, and then Mike could, like, get really mad that his pawn was in the way. But, okay, this is perfectly fine, and I've seen you reading every Kali book there possibly is. You think it would help at um, some point? Yeah, you get through some openings. So that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> but I guess this one is this is quite an interesting variation. But Ken went with E3. It can't be, like, horrible. <laughs> um, and now he played here. So, again, I think maybe Bishop G4, just with the idea of, I mean, I'm trying to play E5, so I have to in your knight. And, and with the g4 move in the other variations where black plays g4 this move mm-hmm. the knight's not on c6 so you can right. play h3 mm-hmm. bishop to uh, h5 right. g4 then bishop there then, then knight jump in here. right there but with that knight there it's just like oh my gosh right this kid's driving <laughs> me crazy <laughs> um is this a kid too Yes, he's uh, seven or eight. <laughs> oh dang! All right, that's good. So you can you can be fifty percent of eight year olds. Right. Old, so that's, that's <laughs> only good. only as you see if he helps helps if he me helps. in this game. If he makes the right move in this game, I'm just down a bishop. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, we will get to that very exciting moment. <laughs> um, but until then, okay, you've you've played reasonably well. We got some pieces out. Um, he's doing very okay. good. I think I feel like this is kind of a wasted move. Probably you should just castle or move the queen. Right. You know, queen you said. Queen e7, or you should castle, or something like that. But, uh, well, uh, wow, these both moves were given X Clam. Who annotated this game? X Clam, uh, castles X Clam, castles X Clam. Was it Josh Fidel? Um, let's see. Who annotated this? That's, that's great. Uh, it doesn't tell me. It's too far away off the screen. But, yeah, it was probably, it was probably Josh. Yeah, so. He just walked there. in the room. X Clam, X Clam. All right, that's Grandmaster analysis right there. Low rated play, lower rated players castle. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, know it's the most amazing move they've ever seen. But here you did play a great move. Um, you, had, you sensed that it was time to play the move e4, which is the goal of the Kali. You, mm-hmm. you you go slow. You it's hard to make opening mistakes. You get the bishop to d3. You bring the knight to mm-hmm. d2, and then you go e4. Yep, and you you got to live your dream. So, okay, you should probably take that because... Well, it's amazing. Threat. Even higher-rated players sometimes... They just ignore that. Just ignore yeah. it and you fork them. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, who just, somebody just did that in the club, too, and it's like, you're like 2,000? And it's like, <laughs> what? So, yeah, it does get missed. <laughs> but, uh, okay, and then you can't help but trade a little bit more. So, I can think the opening has been a success. You know, it's, it's been a pretty good opening here. Um, a mysterious, rook deep move, yeah. rook move. Yeah. It's it's beyond my comprehension. I don't. I really guess he's hitting that rook on c three. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, gonna, that point. This is going to happen at some point or something. Um, <laughs> otherwise, he could have done what Ken West did, and he could put his rook here, and then move <laughs> his his knight around. Uh, he could have done what you did. Um, yeah. And now I thought long and hard at this move, and I mm-hmm. and I'm like, well, does is... it work? Does it work? Well, if it should work i need to really have a pawn mm-hmm. on e5 probably for it to work and i look for 10 minutes i'm like i ah, just take the pawn okay and the pawn he's referring to hopefully some people have have thought about it we got our little little trio of pieces here so we begin to think about possible greek gifts and ken says he he couldn't help himself and he went for it um and it was really ill-advised if it was my ill-advised finds the right move but he helped me out by not finding the right move. Okay, and yeah, so this actually is, is kind of why I, what I wanted to focus on here is this is when Greek sacrifices work and, and when, when they, they don't. don't. <laughs> okay, so he, he takes because, I mean, if you don't accept, then right. okay, I just won that pawn. 
And so, okay, you always bring your knight in. Right. And in this position, there's always four moves, which seems daunting. But usually one or two of them are just, you just easily eliminate them. Right. Uh, for example, going back to here is like really easy. I mean, so that's, you know, hardly any calculation. Right. Also, whenever they go here and your bishop is on this line, that's almost never right. You because really at least, mm -hmm. Yeah, at least, at least this right. is good unless, you know, you have something better. So there's really only two moves to even calculate more than a couple seconds here. And they're, you know, they can be difficult. And um, so you, you got kind of fortunate that your opponent went to the wrong square. Right. But we'll, we'll test the audience. Uh, which square should you go to here with the black king? G6, exactly. Yeah, you should go to G6. Uh, we'll come right back to this. Let's check out the game because from here... He did play fantastic. He found the, the <laughs> mate from here. Um, in this position, Black's best move is to take this knight. But oh. uh, that's and then you don't get made it immediately. But you're playing mm -hmm. nice material, yeah. And in this position, this is actually a, a well-known mate in five, and you played it correctly, oh. so that was good. So so maybe I am a grandmaster. So maybe you are. <laughs> and yeah. Um, so this actually, if you've seen a lot of Greek gift games, when the rook they get into this position and then they move their rook over that there's always just a mate in five. And, and Ken went right for it. So he played great, he took, and now this check, now you force him away, checkmate. So a fantastic finish, it worked really well. Thank God. It looks really pretty on paper. But if he so goes... that's good. It looks nice too. Yeah, it's very aesthetically pleasing. That's an awesome mate. <laughs> so I guess let's just look at it for a while. Let's give people at home a chance to... Put that on my wall. Yeah, as you frame it, the Hall of Fame, they have a big thing tomorrow. Maybe we'll just we'll bring this over. But if he goes to g6, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, I'm, I'm playing down the bishop or a pawn. What was your plan here? Uh, like I say, I thought 10 minutes, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going for it. And I think the plan is, well, he's only 600. Maybe, it's, maybe it'll work even if it doesn't work. Um, and there is sort of a general rule, too, that I've sort of noticed about this. Okay, so when they take away your most active square, right. you need to go to the next most active square, right. threatening and, discoveries. And he has a simple pawn move that kills the whole attack. Mm -hmm. I'm down a bishop for a pawn. So as a general rule, too, if black can kick the queen off of the g-file, then this normally doesn't work. Right. So here, as he said, it's a simple pawn move, and the queen has to move away from the g-file, so there's no discoveries, and you there's no more... You can't go to the, the h-file, the rook comes over, yeah, so. and, and, and I showed this to him after the game, mm. and he's like, oh, I could have won? I'm like, yeah. yeah, you could have won. <laughs> so, you know, if this guy isn't here then this perhaps works because after f5, you go back to g3. Right. They attack you again, you go back to g4, right. you know, so it doesn't. But that's just sort of the general rule in these situations. When they can kick you off of the g file in this position, it probably doesn't work. And Josh Fridell in his analysis said king to g6. He said the king must be brave. Let's see. <laughs> uh, let's see, king g6. Yeah. And I'm not sure how white continues the assault. Exactly. Yeah. Because after I showed uh, Timothy afterward, mm -hmm. F5, and I'm yeah, just... F5, yeah. Yep, if you can kick the queen off, then it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. All right. But, all right, let's see what happened in the third round. So we got one more game coming up here. Uh, and you're playing Richard Pope, who gets Grandmaster lessons every week. Oh, um, and you know what he plays. Oh, yeah, this is actually... This is great. Yeah, I should, you don't know who's which color, because... <laughs> You, you, he you plays know. the collie. He plays the collie too. So yeah, that's great. Um, so yeah, we don't we haven't established which side Ken West is in this game, but uh, go the black. he had the black pieces. Okay, and he played this line in the opening. There was like a little opening trap, sort of that, oh, really? that kind of happened here. I don't know if it's even the best, but it kind of happened here. So this is kind of nice. So since you can, if you can get away with a move like this, then things are pretty good. And oftentimes, too, white will just wait. Um, we'll just make some moves. Wait for you to go to here or something so that I can go after your bishop. That's right. another. Right. This is another common approach because when you put your bishop outside the pawn chain, maybe I can go after it. And, you know, so this is sort of a very dynamic position that could also occur in these types of positions. But instead of c4, he decided to go with the move bishop to d3. Which surprised me because when I play the Kali, I never give up that white square bishop. Right, yeah, normally I that's... Don't, I don't, how can I Greek sacrifice? Right, yeah, you're never taking bishop. here if the bishop's yeah. off the board. Uh, so you took, and okay, before we 
take a deeper look at this position. Let me just show you this is what he played. And what did uh, Richard play in this position? And so it's a he, move I know because I played it in the same position, but playing black against it, I... I forgot how he can do that. Yeah, and that, that happens all the time. You know, it's some opening that you know and love is one color, but then when the oh, shoe's yeah, on the other foot... Oh, yeah, he can do that, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I did, I did that three weeks ago. <laughs> so what did white play in this position? I'm not even sure it's the best move, but... Because I looked, I looked in the database just in this position, uh -huh. and they're like... Yeah, good people that just castle over playing 92. Uh, they don't yeah, even do it all the time. And Matthew Manley, a regular here at the club, said he loves playing against the variation that White pulls mm -hmm. off, even if he loses that pawn, mm -hmm. which we won't go into yet. He loves playing <laughs> against it because he feels like he gets several tippy. Right, and you do, right? So it's going to be one of those scenarios to give away more of a hint where White takes a B pawn, and then you'll be able to win lots of tempi kicking the queen around in the future. So if you wanted to prevent, let's just show it. Here was the move. Check. Picking and up the B-pawn. We won't show what Ken played yet because we got to talk about it. But then he takes the B-pawn on the next move. So if you wanted to, you could play the move C6. Just very solid and, you know, now you can you can choose which way you want to get your bishop out. It's up to you. Right, and, and you kind of got a Slav set up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just very solid. And you're playing, I guess he's, he's a little bit higher rated. So, you know, some solid opening choice would be, be quite nice. But he played the move E6. And in comes the check. And here I believe a mistake was made. Yes. So, all right, facing this threat. So he's thinking, well, I can maybe block the check. But how would you guys block here? Because I think... I took the wrong route. Yeah, I feel like you took the wrong route. So we'll, just, we'll see how the audience would have handled this position. I think that would be interesting. Queen d7. All right. And then you're going to play, like, here? And then I, I'm going to go here. Um, yeah, so you do have to be careful, so probably not that way. Because <laughs> we are anticipating that when you take here, you're on the rook. And that was played in the game. So this is this is exactly the game. Okay. So we'll we'll come back and see if there's a little trap here or not. And it turns out this this works out for um, for white. So yeah, really you should just play sort of the simple. Right. And the reason I went to c six is because when he goes to takes the b pawn, I want to protect the, uh, the a rook? pawn. The a pawn. Your rook is protecting the a pawn. Well, no, but I mean when I, when I slide it over. To attack you, okay. the queen. So you, okay, but then you move it right away, so it's not right. And then I'm like, anyway. oh wait, I can't move the rook because he'll <laughs> take my knight with check. Uh huh. And so at first, I mean, this looks pretty good because I oh, I got a big threat. I'm gonna take your c pawn. I'm gonna fork you. It looks pretty good, but White was clever enough to find a way out. Um, so you can pause at home. I'm gonna give it away for the live audience here. In this position, White played queen b5 check, and now he has time to bring the queen back and defend the pawn. And now I just play c3 and knock your knight back. and So, yeah, you have to, you have to worry now about this move. Yeah, and I was. I was. <laughs> That's why I did the next move. Um, so c5. You have to. Oh. Okay. Otherwise, you lose the knight. <laughs> yeah. It's tough. So he did this anyway. And then here, too, I think he, he sort made of made a mistake. He made a mistake here. He brought the queen back in. Yeah, he just he couldn't help himself. No. He got to move the queen again. I really think, yeah, I mean, he's your castle, we should develop a knight, you know, we should, you know, so you should do something else. Lots of things. Um, but you can never move your queen around too many times in the opening, I guess, so. All right, that was, it was a good square one, so I'll go back. Yeah, back there again, still good, yeah. And even though you're down a pawn, I think trading the queens here is, is I think so, too, acceptable. because his queen side development's lagging, and I'm like, I'm down a pawn, mm -hmm. but I can get all my pieces and castle before he can, and maybe that will help. Yeah. And, okay, so this is the extra pawn that you have. So that's your extra pawn, but at least, okay, I get some pressure here. I can develop, uh, whoop, not that, whoop. I can develop castle. If I need to put a rook on the e-file, I can. Maybe I can play for this break at some moment. Um, it's not altogether that, that bad. I mean, I mean I'd, I'd rather have but, a pawn, but, <laughs> right? you know. It's, just, um, it's not like a full piece that I give up later here. Mm -hmm. But I think, too, here you <laughs> made a, a, just a strategic mistake that, was quite costly. Just where I pushed the pawn? Yeah, so in this position, you played c4. I think, really, you should you should try to develop and castle. 
And this happens all the time where there's this tension in the center and part of you wants to go here and then put this pawn here and start doing stuff on the queen's side. And I thought it would also prevent his bishop, his dark squared bishop from coming out. Okay, you were worried he would come out this way? or I don't know. You don't know? How does... Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it, what it, really happens, too, when you play a move like this... Yeah, there's no tension anymore. Is Since there's no tension, it's just so much easier to play the move E4. Right. So you, you've just strategically sort of <laughs> given up on go. the potential for you to play E5. You got now a pawn, now take some initiative. So. Yeah, so this just didn't quite work out. So I don't, I don't particularly like that move. Um, yeah, and so he's just going to play E4. E4, exactly. Yeah, when the rook goes there, you know that's coming. Um, so again, we have to do something about this. I can't remember what you did here. What did you do here? Push the pawn. Yeah, that doesn't look right. Um, I think for better or worse, you have to go here. Well, okay, so if I take with the pawn, then I'm, I'm you know, I might be losing this guy sometimes. Um, so I have to worry about everybody. But I think maybe if I take with a knight, and if you take, you know, something like this. Um, okay, still I'm down a pawn, but perhaps I can use this square in the future for a knight. Perhaps I can have a solid structure. Maybe I can, you know, if you put your knight here, maybe I can even trade my bishop for your knight. I get a good knight versus bad bishop, and I got pressure on the queen side. You know, I'm trying to just find some, some positives or some possibility where you might actually end up getting a good position. So I'm just, I'm living, I'm dreaming here. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I see a square like this. I'm like, well, I kind of just want my knight here. Right. That'll help me whenever I play b5, b4. It's, you know, I can bring my rooks over, do stuff on the queen side, and maybe I can get some pressure, get some counterplay, get something going. That's kind of what you, you need to do in these types of positions because, you know, you're down a pawn. Um, but that didn't happen. What happened was you went here and... Everything is tense, but he's more ready for it than you are. Right. And I think both of them, both captures win. <laughs> uh, right. He played maybe the weaker of the two. This also looks very crushing. <laughs> I mean, you're on, you're on everything. Everything's on everything. Right. <laughs> so this might even be more crushing, but yes. what he did in the game is certainly fine. This also is big advantage for white. Well, here's um, where I make a big mistake when he captures. Yeah. Maybe I should take that knight so, back. So, yeah, 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 yeah. This is a big test. So now we're not trying to play the best move. But who can play like Ken West in who, this position? Who can pick the most non-grandmasterly, <laughs> non-D <laughs> non player <laughs> play here? Yeah, so yeah, if you're in the, the 1200 range, perhaps immediately this move comes to your mind. Otherwise, you know, I mean, it's hard knight, to play this the move. Knight, white knight is waiting to be taken, but I'm like, yeah, I don't need it. Yeah, the moral of the story is when they take your stuff, take it back. Take it back. Yeah. Can, it, can anybody Ken West it up? I'm really confused. <laughs> right, because all you can see is taking the knight back. Yeah, yeah you have to <laughs> ignore that. And come you... up with another move. <laughs> and when you ignore that, and he retreats the knight, and you look at four moves later, and you go, where did I lose a piece? Yeah. No, 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 that takes something. Don't take something. Don't take anything. Don't take anything. Just oh, make some random. King, eight, 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 eight. That would be a good move. Uh, you know, safe kings are, are important. But uh, in in the game, he chose the move. Go to the middle with the rook. <laughs> yeah, centralize your pieces. And then he just went back. And yeah, somewhere, and I, somewhere I, he lost a piece. And I didn't realize that three moves later, I look and I count. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> He's got an extra minor. We're going to... I didn't realize we went over it later, and I said, "When did I lose the piece?" He goes, "Right here." I'm like, "Oh." And you, I mean, you would be surprised how many times I do see this, though. But when they take your piece, you have to—you just have to yeah, take, take it, it back. back. It doesn't matter what's happening here. Stuff, you know, some other bad stuff might be happening. You might be losing all these pawns or something. But you have to take it back. Um, so I think if here, too, probably you could even set up a little trick. I can go here and hope that you do this, and I take here. That's a little trick I could hope for. So I, I got to have a little hope. Um, so yeah, I think here if, if he even, if he goes for the, I mean, this should be bad because I don't, right. I, I don't know, maybe I can play here or something. But um, so it's bad, but however bad it is, whatever's happening in the center, this is you need to take the piece. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, and realize when you're down a piece, not, mm. not later. Yeah, it's yeah. When you that it's a bad feeling. I think we've all had it at least at some point. Um, it's like where what am I down material? How'd that what? you look up at the board and yeah. you see an extra minor, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. So be really careful when you're making all these trades that you know 
how much stuff you got on the board. <laughs> so you just went back. Um, I don't know if there's, a, there's more to this game, but let's just see. So yeah, I gonna, had a couple little tricks. You had a couple little tricks? Okay. All right. So we made a threat. Okay, we're attacking your H-pawn. All right, you saw it. Boom! And now? Drop the hammer. Now you got a good move here? I got a sack. All right. I'm not sure if I believe it, but... I, I should be able to win the piece back, but should. I didn't follow up on that either. Okay. Let's, <laughs> yeah, I don't believe it, so I take it. Um, your, your point is you check me? I check. Okay. I don't actually remember what happened here. Um, now I should push the pawn. You should push the pawn. Yeah. But I didn't. So I'm going to move somewhere. I'll tell you. I'll tell you in a second. I'll tell you in a second. This is interesting. I don't know. What if, what if I just really retreat? Do I have to care? What's happening here? So what are you doing? I just want to see what... What's the idea here? Bring the other rook in. <laughs> just yeah, you just bring your rook in, and your your attack is so powerful. You have time. I, I got just... all these morphy like pieces. <laughs> you know, I've got all pieces in the game. And yeah. He's got two sitting out. It's funny you say it because if you like morphy, then you want to stay here at seven thirty because oh good. Ben Feingold has some morphy games to show. Love it. Um, and, and maybe this won't be among them. But you played here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, text the night. So he defended his knight and took more of your stuff. Right. Okay. I, I check. You check. So that was good. You got your got at least something back, and it's a little chaotic, but I think he he managed to navigate through these right slight slightly murky complications. Okay, very good move. Uh, was there anything else beyond this? Uh, yeah, I got to trade bishops now when he comes back. Okay, so he forced a trade. That's good. I'm up a night, and I got three on zero. Right. So but I still had some play in this, believe it or not. You still had some play? Yeah. Okay, we'll see. Just zip through it. All right. All right, we were just talking about you. I annotated this game yesterday. Did you have, did you have some deep insight into this position? Yeah, white's up a night. White's up a night. With <laughs> 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 three connected pass <laughs> Yeah. Um... And then he's gonna make a queen, but you did check him. That was cool. Well, I thought I thought this was mate totally overlooking the fact he, okay. he just sacks the rook well, and then queens. And then you know? <laughs> if he can't sack the rook, I'm doing pretty well. What's wrong with king f three? Well, yeah, then I. You were you were thinking here is checkmate, but it's not. Yeah. Well, I knew no, I knew the knight was there. Also, king f two wins. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, king, <laughs> king two f. I mean, rook to f. I mean, eight, uh, you can do H three. H three. Okay, I got really checked. Wins. That's one of them. Okay, we love it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, even. right, and also the move that he played was more spectacular. Yeah, because Rook, Rook takes pawn, and I'm like, ah! Takes the pawn. <laughs> I'm like, oh, are you kidding and then, me? Yeah, and then when you take back, it's check, and he made a queen. Right, and, um, then, and he, I guess... And, and then he checks me enough. here, and I, it's over. <laughs> As if it wasn't worked before. Okay, well, so that was uh, three Ken West games. Those were a lot of fun. I think we I think we learned a lot here tonight. I think it was. Man, I was here for like ten seconds and I couldn't take it. How'd you guys do? Yeah, I know. Um, what's also funny, just so some grandmasters too, because they always have to annotate the games. And I don't think Ken West is even the, the worst suspect at this. But they come in and some of them just get angry and they like can't annotate these games. You know, they'll put like maybe one move or one comment in and they're like, I just can't watch it. They come in and they're like complaining to me like, this didn't happen, did it? This isn't a chess game, right? They didn't play this. But those are legitimate games. They all happened. They happened right here in the nights. So thank you very much, Ken thank West, you. for uh, being a part of this great thank lecture. You.